Question of the day, what's your favorite coffee table game? I mean, that's why we're out here today. We're taking a look at games that actually can fit, or a game that can actually fit on a coffee table. And no, this game is not a game about coffee tables. That's a good reference. Let me know in the comments below where that's from, roughly. Uh, but we're taking a look at a game that does, in fact, fit on a coffee table, which is a nice thing to have every once in a while, right? Something that packs small, but does it play big? I mean, you've heard us talk before, we're magicians, we're mentalists. Our goal when we go and perform in front of you know, six, 7,000 people is we'd like to be able to pack small, but play to that huge audience. So what we're taking a look at today is Ankh or, or Ankh or, Really not 100% on the pronunciation because there is an apostrophe here and it's jacking me up, throwing me off. I know the first part is onk, like an onk, uh, and there's an O-R at the end. So we're going to go with onk or uh, encore, but that sounds like I'm saying encore. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Let's talk about how this game plays, what type of game it is, um, everything you need to know about this coffee table style game right now. So this is Encore basically set up. Now we have our, our finalized games over here because I want to show you kind of how you stack things. But I want to see the basic of the board is really interesting. Notice that these tokens are coming out of this board. The way this works is you shuffle up these price tokens at the beginning of the game. So this is always two, 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 three, three, three. But what they cost in those slots is different every time you play. So what you're going to do is you're going to set out six of these types of tiles out here from one of the two draw stacks. You'll have two draw stacks, you shuffle everything up, set out six of the tiles. This is what's available to buy from. So on your turn, you can do one of two things. You can either take three of the resource tokens, and this, depending on how many people are playing the game, there are different amounts of the resource tokens. It's four for a two-player game, uh, then a little bit more for three and four. But uh, these are the normal resource tokens. There's blue, red, yellow, um, black, and green. But the orange ones are the onk tokens, and those are kind of a wild action that allows you to do something, not really a wild, but they allow you to do a special bonus action. So you can take three of those tokens, or you can buy one of these tokens down here. When you buy it, you immediately place it into your tableau, kind of like we've got over there. Here's a couple things you need to be looking out for. Notice that there are colors on these tiles as well as certain symbols on them. So they're animals, colors, some of them are just straight points, some of them give you a warehouse spot to store an extra resource, and some of them are scribes which will allow you to have an extra turn at the end of the game. However, what you're really looking for to score points and to maximize is that you want to clump together similar animals and similar colors together. At the end of the game, your similar colors and similar animals are worth one point per animal in a group of two or more, uh, and one point per color in a group of two or more. So if you have three black tokens next to each other, it's worth three points. If you have one black token, it's worth zero points. Hopefully that makes sense to everybody. You're then gonna do the same thing with the animals. You know, same, same kind of breakdown I just gave for that. Same thing for the animals. One other thing though is if you ever get five, and there is five over here, five different of the same animal, one, two, three, four, five, you can then take one of these bonus tokens as a plus three points at the end of the game. Now, one of the things you notice over there when I showed Carla's side is that you can build up too. So if you ever have four tokens supporting the base and one of those is the color of the tile you're buying, you can sit it on top of those in the middle. When you do that, you can pay one less resource of the type that you're purchasing out there for that tile. So it's a neat little bonus. Other extra actions you can do with your onk, you can take that and you can refresh the only way to refresh in fact you'll move everything down in the two or three in a three or four player game you'll kick that leftmost tile out but in a two player game you don't move everything down and then refill you can also and that's just a bonus action for spinning an onk you don't actually have to use your turn for that and the other thing you can do is you can readjust where tiles are so if you say ah, i really need to get this more close to some green tiles you can move it around your board you can do the same thing for top ones as long as you place them in a legal spot and you can only place them on the outside you can't like pick it up and move it to the inside and you're not switching tiles you're just putting one elsewhere that is how you play the game the game stops when someone gets 13 tokens or 13 tiles I should say everyone finishes out to equal turns you count points you count points for the bonus tiles points listed on the tiles here then you do the similar colors and similar animals that I mentioned and then it's one point per three tokens left over one rule is you can only have five tokens at the end of your turn never having more than two onks at the end of your turn that is how you play Encore right there. So that's Encore. It is in fact a small resource gathering 
tile laying game. So obvious comparisons for me are gonna be Splendor, right? This is very much a Splendor style game. You're taking chips, you're spinning those chips to get things. However, the thing I do like that's different is the slight spatial element here. So you're not just collecting things for a tableau, you're collecting things to hopefully get a nice grid of tiles that will give you the most points by the end of the game. Um, it's actually easy to get smoked in this game if you were playing towards a strategy and you just can't get your tiles that you need, which is why you have to be strategic about how you use those onk tokens, like we talked about, you know, those bonus actions you get. So um, I like several things about this game. First of all, I like the way it looks. I, I like how compact this is. I love this insert. This is a gorgeous insert. Everything just fits in it. It's ready to pop out and play. Um, this is also one of those airport games I like to, uh, to mention, you know, because Carla and I are on the road quite a bit. And we're always looking for kind of meatier games to put uh, on the table in the airport that aren't just card games and things like that. Uh, so this does have that feel. I really like the fact that it's random every time. You put those little tokens in to, for the cost. I think that's cool. That's a nice addition to where it's not, well, five coins, then four coins, then three coins. It does change the strategy up um, to where in this, this last game we played, um, we had to have two reds and a black for one of the things, whereas next time it might be one of each type of resource in that slot. So, you know, one of three of the types of resources. So. The randomness of the setup is really nice. I really like the board, the way it looks. It's very simple. I like the way the tiles look. I like that grid shape pattern uh, when you lay them out and how you can build vertically and how you can use the Ankh to move things around to maximize those points. All in all, Encore is a great, very light game. Um, it, it is that though. Just know it's very light, so you're not getting anything meaty out of this. You're taking chips or you're buying a token. That's it. So, so don't don't think you're getting into this and be like, oh man, this is Amon Ray or whatever. One of super heavy, deep Egyptian uh, game. This is an abstract game at best. So much so, I, I laugh pretty hard about this. Yes, it's obviously a fish. It's obviously <laughs> tusk, ivory, bone, something like that. This one is probably obviously ebony, maybe. I, I don't know. Uh, this is like some sort of cloth. It doesn't even name what the resources are in the book. It's just resource token, resource token. I think that's that's funny to me because it's more of a uh, it's more of a wink. You know, the fact that we're not even going to call these anything. It's not about getting saffron and cinnamon. It's about getting get resource tokens and spend resource tokens. So that to me is funny. So it is a very abstract, very light game, but it is a neat game. And if you like that sort of style, this one's a definite win for you. If you like Splendor, you're going to want to try this one just for the, uh, the depth of the tile laying and getting things to kind of lay out how you want them. So that's all I have to say about Encore. I'm Brian Drake here on the Dice Tower. Make sure to follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Dice Tower Brian. And until next time, we'll see you. Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.